Shalom and uh, a good day to all of us. We thank God for yet another beautiful day that the Lord has given to us that we may gather together and just hear what he has in us, in, uh, for us this day, sorry. Uh, on behalf of Christ Coast City Church, I want to invite all of us from wherever you are watching us, feel at the feet of Jesus Christ as we go through um, our service today. And who would have known that the Lord would bring us to the end of this year. And here we are, we are approaching Christmas and we are seeing the faithfulness of God in our lives. And we thank God that he has been with us every step of the way. And it is a rare Christmas because we are uh, celebrating a season where we've gone through so many challenges. But we are saying God has brought us this far. And that's why the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 25. And uh, let me start from verse 24. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called his name Jesus. And so we see Joseph was prepared for the coming of the Savior. And he ends up being the earthly father of our Savior. But try and imagine what Joseph went through for him to be able to take up this task. Maybe what we are reading is after uh, persuasion by the Spirit of God. But try and imagine what went through Joseph's mind when he was being told that he would be the father of the Savior. Try and put yourself in Mary's shoes also. Here you are. They've followed the Jewish customs so religiously. They've done well so far. And then comes in the Savior and he disrupts the way they do things. There are so many things that Joseph risked. There are so many things that Mary risked. And because of that, they uh, faced almost uh, um, were being thrown out of their society. Why? Because they were the vessels that were used to prepare for the coming of the Savior. And so when we look at the two of them, there was a sacrifice on their part. They had to give up so much. I'm imagining Mary must have uh, thought one day that the father would walk her down the aisle and she would have a grand wedding. But because of the coming of the Savior, all these plans had to be disrupted. And so, disrupted, sorry. And so, I am inviting us this day, as we approach Christmas, what are you going to allow the, uh, the Lord to disrupt for the purposes of his kingdom? Already, our programs for the year were disrupted. And I want to believe God was calling the world to attention. And it calls upon us in this season to be keen and find out what would God want us to do differently this time round that we may be able to be pleasing before him. So that this Christmas will not just be Christmas as usual. It will not just be the aimless and the endless celebrations without really focusing on what God would want us to do. What would God want us to give up? this Christmas, that we might find him? What would God want us to put behind us that we may be able to find him? And so, um, for Mary and Joseph to be able to bring the Savior into the world, their life was disrupted in a very major way. And I pray as we approach this season, let's just allow the Lord to disrupt our programs and allow him to have his way as we go through this season. So I'll invite us to pray, and then we'll continue with our service as the Lord leads us. Father, we thank you and we bless you, and we honor your holy name, King of glory, but that, Lord, you are a God who disrupts the programs of men, the plans of men, and you allow your divine plans, King of glory, to be accomplished in our lives. And Father, you are reminding us this season, you are looking for men and women who are willing to fall or to align themselves to your plan and to your purpose, King of glory. And we are saying this day, Lord, 
Here we are, King of Glory. Come and disrupt our programs. Come and disrupt our plans, our thinking, O oh God, our purposes, King of Glory, that your purposes may be accomplished in us, King of Glory, in a very special way. We submit ourselves to your leading, that Father, you shall direct us every step of the way. Help us that we shall not be caught up, O oh God, in worldliness, even as we celebrate this season, King of Glory. We shall not be caught up, my Father, in traditions, O oh God, and cultures, King of Glory, that Oh God, separate us from you, my Father. But Lord, we shall allow you to disrupt our plans, our programs, uh, that Father and our God, uh, throughout this season, we shall see you in a way we've not seen you before, King of Glory. We thank you and we bless you. I commit my viewers into your able hands. Father, minister to them in a very special way. Let this season be a season. They will encounter the living God, the presence of the living God, and their lives shall be transformed to the glory and honor of your holy name, that it will not be a wasted season, but it shall be a season, O oh God, where you shall raise us higher to another level, and we shall bless your holy name. Speak to each one of us in a very special way. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless you that even as the worship team comes to lead us, King of Glory, let the power of your Holy Spirit just move in our lives as you move in the asking of glory. And we shall celebrate you as we honor you. Even as the ministry of the word comes forth, Lord, let your word disrupt our thinking, King of Glory, and change us into your thinking pattern, King of Glory, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you. We bless you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray.
hakuna mwingine kama wewe Bwana wastahili heshima zote wastahili sifa zote wewe unayetupenda bila mwisho unatupenda bila kifani wastahili Bwana twaliwa jina lako tukikiri kwamba wewe ni mwema Bwana wewe ni mwema peke yako umeketi kwenye kiti cha enzi nguvu zote ni zako mamlaka yote ni zako heshima zote ni zako mfalme mkuu Shalom. Thank you, worship team, for leading us so well. We bless the Lord that we have come this far, and therefore it gives me pleasure to invite the minister of the word today, and that is none other than our elder Joseph Gishuru to come and lead us and just share with us what the Lord has placed in his heart. And I want to assure you, brethren, we are in for a good time as we receive from the Lord this day. Welcome, Elder Barikiwe San. Shalom and praise God. I welcome you to our service today, uh, where we are just about to get to Christmas. Uh, Christmas is coming in a few days. And uh, so uh, today, we'll be trying to connect the dots on Christmas. And uh, you know very well that uh, Christmas is celebrated uh, across the world. Even uh, people who do not know who Christ is, they still celebrate Christmas. Uh, but uh, also for us who are Christians, we sometimes uh, celebrate Christmas without good knowledge. And that's why we want to connect the dots uh, to be able to see uh, the proper meaning of Christmas. And uh, most of the things that are done over Christmas have nothing to do with Christ. Uh, in actual fact, uh, Christmas has been turned into a trade. And uh, the interesting thing is that they are not trading uh, Jesus, who is the reason uh, for the season. But instead, uh, they are trading things like Santa Claus, uh, the Christmas tree, and uh, people indulge in all manner of uh, orgies. There's a lot of fornication around this time of Christmas, adultery. Actually, qu quite a number of Christians go back uh, because of uh, the things they get involved in. And uh, what we need to know is that uh, the day 25th may not be exactly the date uh, the day Christ was born, uh, but uh, it was a time in the Roman Empire uh, when they agreed that uh, they would be celebrating Christmas that day, and that was a time uh, when the state and the religion were one in the time of uh, Emperor Constantine. Uh, Constantine. And uh, so it was a political uh, decision and uh, for us to be able to see that uh, the Christmas day may not have been uh, 25th, uh, 25th in the northern hemisphere where Israel is, uh, is uh, quite cold. It's winter. And uh, you will recall in the scriptures there were shelt, uh, shepherds uh, who are looking at their flocks by night. So it would not be expected that uh, the shepherds would be at night uh, deep in uh, Christmas. Uh, so what happened uh, uh, when they agreed on that day was that uh, 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 there were other pagan ceremonies that used to happen on that day. But then uh, the religion of that time, uh, I think it was the Roman Catholic, they agreed they could have Christ Mass. So that's where the word Christmas comes from. But uh, as believers, there's nothing wrong in celebrating uh, Christmas on the 25th. Uh, the book of Romans tells us that uh, 
some people will regard uh, Romans chapter 14. Uh, Romans chapter 14, uh, verse 5 and 6. Eh? Uh, one person esteems one day above another. Another esteems every day alike. Let each uh, be fully convinced in his own mind. He who observes the day observes it to the Lord. And he who does not observe the day to the Lord, he does not observe it. He who eats, eats to the Lord, for he gives thanks. And he who does not eat to the Lord, he does not eat and gives thanks to the Lord. Uh, so uh, the day is not important. What is important is uh, to celebrate Jesus. But uh, for us to be able to celebrate uh, Jesus with knowledge, we need to understand why Jesus uh, came to this world, and uh, specifically in a human body. And uh, we'll go down memory ring uh, from Genesis, uh, from creation, and uh, we'll be able to see how we connect the dots all the way to Christmas. Uh, so Genesis uh, in uh, chapter 1, uh, if you look at verse 26, uh, this is when uh, God uh, was uh, deciding to uh, create man. Verse 26, then God said, uh, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping things that creeps on the earth. So the key thing here is you're seeing, let us. So it is not, God was not uh, alone, uh, but uh, he had somebody else uh, who, in order to be able to appreciate who this person was, uh, we go to the book of John. Uh, John, uh, uh, the very uh, first uh, uh, chapter, and uh, that person was Jesus. So Jesus was there uh, from the very beginning. In uh, John 1, uh, verse 1, uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. So you can see that uh, uh, Jesus was there from the beginning, and uh, it is through him things were made. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made uh, that was made. And uh, in verse 14 of the same uh, uh, John uh, 1, uh, the word, and the word became fresh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of uh, grace and truth. So the word became fresh, and we are looking at Jesus coming in the body. And uh, that's uh, what uh, we celebrate uh, over Christmas. But uh, what happened uh, from creation, uh, we had the man being uh, created, and uh, very soon after, man sinned. And uh, what they did uh, is, in, uh, you see, they were given a commandment uh, in uh, Genesis chapter 2. Uh, if we read uh, verse 16 uh, and 17, And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. And uh, so they were told not to eat from a particular tree, uh, but in chapter 3, they ate of, uh, uh, from that tree, and they died a spiritual death. They did not die physically, but they died a spiritual uh, death. And uh, we see that uh, through their death, uh, sin came into the world, uh, Romans 5.12 tells us that, j therefore, just as sin entered the world uh, through one man and death through, death through sin, in this way death came to all men because we all sinned. And we are all born as sinners. Uh, that's why uh, even for small children, you don't have to teach them to sin. 
uh, even when they are so young, you are holding them in your hands, uh, they know how to be selfish. They want all the attention. And uh, once they start walking and uh, uh, they are a little bit bigger, uh, you don't have to teach them to lie. It is in them because they got it uh, from that man, uh, the, the, the first man, that is Adam. Actually, David puts it very well in uh, Psalms 51, 5. Behold, I was brought, brought forth in iniquity, and in sin my mother conceived me. So uh, we see that we all are born uh, sinners. And uh, when God now, uh, who is really wanted to relate with uh, a man uh, more closely, uh, he called Abraham, and uh, uh, he got into a covenant with him. And uh, we may not read that, but uh, uh, we know that uh, God called Abraham, and uh, he promised him that uh, he would bless him. And uh, part of uh, uh, his promises were fulfilled in his children, and especially Jacob. Uh, Jacob, his grandson, uh, became the father to Israel, and they became uh, God-chosen people. They were in Egypt uh, for a long time. And uh, when Moses uh, went to deliver them from, uh, uh, from slavery in Egypt, as they were coming back, they were told how to worship God. So they were told, taught how to approach the holy God. And uh, this was uh, through sacrifices. Uh, and uh, they would uh, uh, slaughter lambs, they would slaughter goats, they would slaughter bulls, and they would get remission of sin and would be able uh, to approach God. The book of Hebrews uh, uh, talks about this uh, uh, quite well, and uh, we said we are connecting the dots. So uh, we see this uh, uh, in Hebrews 9.22. Uh, the verse 22 tells us, And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Uh, so everything had to be purified with blood. And uh, you can imagine how the tabernacle used to be those days, uh, where everything has uh, been uh, uh, sprinkled with blood. It must have been a, a very messy place. Uh, so that was the old covenant. The old covenant uh, involved uh, people slaughtering animals in order to get remission from sin. But God knew that uh, that was not the end, and he had a better covenant in mind. And so uh, we now come to uh, uh, the new covenant. And this covenant was promised, and we see many uh, prophets uh, who uh, prophesied about uh, the coming of the Messiah. And uh, Jeremiah himself uh, talked about uh, 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 the new covenant. Uh, we read that in uh, Jeremiah 31, uh, verse uh, 31 and 32. Behold, the days are coming. Uh, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the heart to lead them out of uh, the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was husband to them, says the Lord. So the Lord uh, 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 prepared for a new covenant and the prophets of old uh, saw this coming and they prophesied uh, uh, about this. And uh, uh, in uh, the beginning, uh, when man was created, he was created to have dominion on earth. And uh, we see, uh, still trying to connect the dots from Genesis, Genesis uh, uh, 1, uh, verse 26, uh, Okay, actually, we had read it. Let the man have dominion. Uh, so uh, the people who have dominion on this earth are human beings. They are other bodies. Uh, spiritual bodies do not have dominion. And spiritual bodies 
have to get into uh, uh, physical bodies or other bodies in order to have dominion. And that's exactly uh, what God planned, that uh, uh, he will uh, come in a human body because uh, God honors his word and he could not break it. And so he had to come in a human body. And uh, going back to the book of uh, Hebrews, uh, we see uh, uh, Jesus saying, a body thou hast prepared me, in uh, 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 Hebrews 10, 5. So uh, Jesus was there from the, the beginning, got a human body. And uh, uh, that body uh, was uh, uh, through uh, Mary, and uh, our elder Jeremiah helped us in that, uh, that uh, uh, Mary had to carry uh, this human body. And uh, the interesting thing is that uh, Jesus was not conceived the way human beings are conceived. And uh, the reason for this is uh, because if you look at the sacrifices in the Old Testament, uh, those sacrifices, actually, if you check, uh, you will see they were mostly male. And one key thing, and you read, in fact, if you just go search the word, uh, without blemish, it is all over, those sacrifices. So the sacrifices were supposed to be perfect, without blemish. And uh, uh, for there to be a sacrifice that will be perfect, it will not have uh, passed through the same conception process. And so Jesus was conceived in a completely different way. And we see that in Luke uh, 1. Uh, we can read uh, first uh, 34 uh, to 35. Then Mary said uh, uh, to the angel, how can this be since I don't know a man? And the angel answered to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also that holy one uh, who is to be born will be called uh, the Son of God. So Jesus was conceived through the Holy Spirit. Mary had not seen a man, yet uh, she conceived, but she conceived uh, through the Holy Spirit. And uh, what we see is that... Uh, uh, Jesus, unlike all of us, he bypassed the normal transmission of sin. There was no sin in him. Actually, uh, the book of Second uh, 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 Corinthians 5, 21 tells us, he knew no sin. Jesus was the perfect human being with no sin at all. We sin from the children, even when they are born, they are born in sin. They are sinners from birth. But Jesus was not a sinner at all. And uh, he came and uh, uh, submitted himself to become just like man. And uh, he was fully, fully human. Uh, we see that uh, still in the book of uh, Hebrews, uh, chapter 2, uh, verse 17. Uh, Therefore, in all things, he had to be made like his brethren, uh, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining uh, to God, to make propitiation for sins of the people. We can also read verse 18. For in that he himself has suffered, and being tempted, he is able to aid those who are tempted. Uh, so Jesus assumed full human. Uh, 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 form and uh, even feelings. He went through the same things uh, that we go through uh, so that uh, he can also uh, be able to feel uh, for us. And uh, the plan was for him to die. Uh, it he was coming not just to be born and just live a human being. But the final plan was that he would die for the sins of the world. And uh, in the book of John, which we were reading, uh, John, 
I hope you have a pen and paper because I'm uh, reading quite a number of scriptures as we try to connect the dots. John uh, chapter 12, verse 27 tells us that uh, and now this is when he was going to die. Now my soul is troubled and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I came to this hour. So Jesus came for that very purpose. And that's why he had to go through uh, uh, this. I remember there was even a time he was telling, Peter was telling him, it shouldn't happen. And he said, get behind me, Satan. Because he came for that uh, very purpose. And uh, uh, when he came, uh, the book of Hebrews, which we have been reading, uh, tells us about uh, uh, how that sacrifice was to be once and for all. Maybe we can read uh, uh, from uh, uh, verse uh, 5, Hebrews chapter 10. Therefore, when he came to the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offering and sacrifice for sin, you had no pressure. Therefore I said, Behold, I have come. In the volume of the book it's written of me to do your will. Previously saying, Sacrifice and offering, burnt offering and offering for sin you did not desire nor had pressure in them, which are offered according to the law. Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first, and he establishes the second. By that, uh, will, by, by that will we have been certified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. So uh, Jesus came and established a new covenant. Uh, we talked about the old covenant. He came and by his death on the cross, we got into a new covenant. And this is through the blood that uh, she, he shed on the cross. And going back to the book of John, which we have referred to a lot in John 1, uh, verse 12 uh, tells us, uh, but as many as received him, uh, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name, who are born not of blood, not of the will of flesh, uh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So uh, we also know the very famous uh, uh, verse, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his son, only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So Jesus uh, came uh, to establish a new covenant uh, through his death on the cross. And uh, uh, this covenant uh, uh, where we are reading in Jeremiah, it was a covenant where the law will be written in our hearts. And uh, uh, what happens is that when the first man sinned, the Holy Spirit moved out. But uh, when uh, uh, we uh, when Jesus came to the world, he came to make provision for the Holy Spirit uh, to come back to man. And uh, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, it tells us, In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, in whom also having believed, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So those who come to Jesus they are sealed with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes in, uh, in them. And uh, that is how the word of God gets written in their heart. Because there is a spirit that has been made alive in them that was not there. Uh, and uh, that spirit is the one that will tell you this is wrong, this is right. Uh, because the law is now uh, written into your heart. And so... Uh, as I come to conclude, uh, we have seen uh, how from the very beginning the Spirit of God was there, but uh, because man sinned, the Spirit of God left uh, uh, men, and uh, they would uh, 
to, to approach God who is holy, they would uh, get into sacrifices, uh, animals would die, but uh, this perpetual uh, slaughtering of, uh, of lambs and goats and bulls would only remove sin for a sh time, and that's why they had to continue uh, slaughtering from time to time. But Jesus came to die on the cross for him uh, uh, to shed his blood once and for all uh, that uh, we may have life and have it uh, 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 eternally. That we, other than uh, uh, the establishing a way in which we would have the spirit of God here in earth uh, continually, uh, he also uh, made us uh, to be partakers together with him of the heavenly kingdom which he went uh, to be in uh, when he left this world. So uh, I would want you to think about Christmas as uh, uh, which is coming in a couple of days that uh, this particular Christmas you will not approach it uh, aimlessly. Uh, if you have not uh, met the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, this is the time uh, to accept uh, Jesus, uh, to come into your heart. And you who has accepted uh, uh, Jesus know very well that uh, Christmas, the way it's celebrated, is celebrated in a very pagan way. And will you determine in your heart that you will not uh, partake of these pagan ceremonies? but instead you will celebrate a Jesus who you know, a Jesus who has uh, changed your life completely, who has uh, come into your life and has given you his Holy Spirit, that uh, that spirit uh, will help you to be able to tell this is what to do, this is what not to do. So uh, don't get into Christmas and just do what the others are doing. Uh, all those things, uh, I know some of you think there's no Christmas without the Christmas tree. That came from pagan ceremonies. And uh, when you bring that uh, tree there, uh, you may be partaking of uh, ceremonies. Uh, when uh, uh, you bring Santa Claus into your house, that is a demon. <laughs> and uh, so uh, you need to really think through uh, uh, what Christmas is all about and celebrate Christmas the right way. So if you are there and you are listening to me, will you invite uh, Jesus to come into your heart and um, make him your Lord and Savior, even as I pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, we want to thank you for your revealed word that you are telling us uh, how to celebrate Christmas in the appropriate way. Father, there are many who may not have known you, who do not even know what is the reason for this season. I'm praying for those who are listening to me, O oh God, that Father, with this understanding, they will invite Christ into their hearts and uh, he will be Lord and Savior of their lives, that they will be able to celebrate a Christmas with a difference, a Christmas with knowledge of uh, uh, the Savior who was born in this world, that uh, they will not indulge into sin and levery over this Christmas, but instead they shall celebrate uh, Jesus, uh, who is uh, the Savior of the world, and they shall determine to live for him even in the coming days, O oh God. So I'm praying that you're going to bless your people and that you're going to speak to them, O oh God, that they may know you in a new way. In Jesus' name I've prayed and believed. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Have a good day.